Welcome back. Today, we're diving into preliminary testing with the Intel Arc B580 on Linux. I'm running Ubuntu 24.10 with kernel 6.11.x and the new XE driver, paired with Mesa Git, to see how this new GPU FPS metrics from my last video, where I tested the A770 on kernel 6.12 with the i9-15 driver and Mesa Git. Let's start again with Borderlands 3. I initially tested this game on Ubuntu, but unfortunately I realized the capture didn't work when I started editing. So I re-recorded it on Fedora Rawhide while testing kernel 6.13. On Fedora Rawhide, the experience was noticeably different. Things looked a lot more discombobulated compared to Ubuntu with Mesa Git and kernel 6.12 with significant artifacting. Now, putting aside the potential thermal stress caused by these new drives, the B580 subjectively delivered more vivid visuals during the Ubuntu playthrough, with reflections appearing notably more consistent, even somewhat in the Fedora Rawhide playthrough, which has a lot of artifacting. While the game's cell-shaded style isn't traditionally realistic, these enhancements added a surprising sense of depth. That said, performance wasn't flawless. 1% lows consistently hovered in the mid-50s, with average FPS ranging from the high 70s to the the low 90s. Let's move on to the hard data from my tests on Ubuntu. This is where things get interesting. On Ubuntu, the B580 produced an average FPS of 66.2 with 1% lows at 52.7 and a 97th percentile of 81.6 frames per second. These numbers reveal significant underperformance compared to the A770 using the i9-15 driver. What's even more fascinating is what we're seeing visually from the Fedora Rawhide test using kernel 6.13 and Mesa Git from about two weeks later than the one used in the A770 test. The Fedora Rawhide playthrough has a 1% low similar to the initial B580 test on Ubuntu and an average FPS more in line with the A770 testing. This would seem to suggest that there's a noticeable improvement from either the newer kernel and or newer Mesa drivers. Next up is Control. Big picture, the same issues that plagued Control on the A770 are present on the B580, perhaps even worse. There's a constant micro stutter, making it feel like every second is its own PowerPoint slide. The B580 struggles to generate enough frames, resulting in a choppy experience. During a three minute test on the B580, I recorded an average FPS of 51.4 with 1% lows at 32.1 frames. These numbers reflect the lack of visual stability and fidelity, with a 97th percentile FPS of 71.7. For comparison, the A770 outperformed the B580 across the board in control. The A770 delivered 1% lows of 52.5, nearly 20 frames higher than the B580. It's worth noting that I tested the A770 using the i9-15 drivers, while the B580 currently only works with the new XE driver, from what I could test. Now, let's take a look at Horizon Zero Dawn. Due to flashing issues, I'll be limiting gameplay footage to just a few seconds and relying mostly on screenshots. As you can see, the game still needs a lot of work. There are major shader issues, particularly with reflections on water surfaces and shadows on the ground. During a 3 minute test with FSR enabled, the game averaged 50.8 FPS with 1% lows at 35.7 FPS and a 97th percentile of 62.8 FPS. These results, however, pale in comparison to the A770, paired with the i9-15 driver. On the A770 with FSR enabled, the game delivered an average FPS of 64.3, 1% lows of 47.8 frames per second, and a 97th percentile of 74.3 frames per second. Last but not least, Cyberpunk 2077. This game has some bad things going on, but there's also some good things. First off, it's not really playable yet. Significant shader issues persist, and when I tested it across kernel 6.11, 6.12, and 6.13, asset streaming problems stood out, particularly with cars. On kernel 6.13, this issue was worse, giving the impression that vehicles materialized from thin air. It seems there might be ongoing work to optimize VRAM usage for the B580. And for now, the results are mixed. Now, let's talk about the good. 
Cyberpunk 2077 was the first game I wanted to test after setting up my system with the B580. And despite the rendering issues, I was sort of blown away by the image fidelity. Yes, tools like FSR and XCSS exist to bolster 1% lows, but even without upscalers, the game's native rendering looked incredible, even while running at just 30 frames per second. Let's look at the numbers. Playing native, the game yielded an average 30.1 frames per second, but get this, the 1% low averaged at 23.1 frames per second. So even though it's a low frame rate, the visuals were just so consistent. Yes, FSR is made for that sort of thing and improves on the numbers of the native gameplay, an average frame rate of 47.3 and 1% lows at 32.7 frames per second. Even though this is lower than what you can currently get from the likes of the last two NVIDIA 60 Ti's or the 6700 XT, this is subjectively the best rendering of Cyberpunk I've seen, at least on Linux. I don't know whether to credit CD Projekt Red's updates, Intel's driver devs, Valve, or a combination of all three, but the game looks fantastic. If the shader issues can be resolved, I'm optimistic that Intel's Linux driver team, or even Valve's Mesa contributors, can scale up performance from here. After putting the Intel Arc B580 through its paces, it's clear there's still work to be done with the new XE driver. Some games, like Cyberpunk 2077, showed promising visual fidelity despite shader issues, but others, like Horizon Zero Dawn and Control, highlighted the need for significant driver optimization. When compared to the A770 with the i9-15 driver, the B580 generally falls short, although the latest cutting-edge kernel and Mesa updates suggest some progress. If you're considering Battle Mage for Linux, my advice is to hold off for a few months. The drivers aren't quite ready yet, and the experience still feels experimental. That said, the B580's performance hints at a lot of potential. With continued development, Intel's discrete GPUs could become a compelling option for Linux users in the future. I'm excited to see how things evolve, and I'll keep testing to explore the Arc series' potential on Linux. In fact, I plan to test more games on Battle Mage soon, so stay tuned. If you found this helpful or just enjoyed the journey, don't forget to like or subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.